Hey guys, welcome back to another Geophysical Hazards IB Geography video. Today I'll be covering volcanoes, so let's get started. So this is the typical definition of a volcano, a mountain or hill, typically conical, having a crater or vent through which lava, rock fragments, hot vapor, and gas are being or have been erupted from the Earth's crust. So before we get in, we have to talk about the Ring of Fire which is a string of volcanoes and sites of seismic activity or earthquakes around the edges of the Pacific Ocean. So you could see this like horseshoe shaped belt and it has like intense, like really intense volcanic activity and frequent earthquakes. And this region is home to approximately 75% of the world's active volcanoes and is caused by the movement and collision of tectonic plates. So I'm going to show you a map here. You could see really clearly through the legend, red and black being the most like severe, I guess. Look, through the Pacific Ring of Fire. Okay. Now I'll be talking about the parts of a volcano. So here is the crater. Here's the sill right here. This is the magma chamber. The cloud here is the ash cloud, lava flow, the conduit and the cone, that's just typically the shape. Okay, so a magma chamber is a reservoir where magma is stored beneath the volcano. And an ash cloud, mass of tiny, mass of tiny volcanic rock fragments, dust and gases that are released into the air. The conduit is like a pipe-like structure that connects the magma chamber to the surface. A sill is a flat rock formation that forms when molten rock uh, molten magma cools and solidifies in a crack or fissure. Crater is a bowl-shaped depression at the top of a volcano. When they say depression, it means like a dent. And the cone is the shape, and the lava is molten rock that flows from a volcano during an eruption. Yes, lava outside, magma inside. So types of volcanoes. This is very important. So the first volcano we have here is the shield volcano, which is really broad and gently sloping volcano with a shape resembling a warrior shield. They are formed from layers of cold lava. So generally characterized by non-explosive effusive eruptions with the outpouring of lava flows. So an example is Manua Loa in Hawaii, um, Mount Etna in Italy. So going more into it, so this is what Mauna Loa looks like. It's just pouring out the lava. It's not really harmful unless you actually go and touch it, which is very dangerous. So link shapes to characteristics of lava emitted. So lava pours out. It's runny. So it's basilic magma. That's what runny lava is, essentially. And the shape of the volcano is quite low and wide. Um, shield volcanoes are primarily built by the low flow of low viscosity basal basaltic lava excuse me so they're kind of like lava fountains and they're not super life-threatening like i said earlier and explosions are least expected lava is constantly pouring out of it yeah so they are usually characterized by their low height you could see from here from this picture this diagram it shows how it's not really a conical cone shape well it does have like a little you know hill shape but it's not really really tall yes it's least powerful that is a spelling mistake and yeah oh and just a reminder viscosity is a measurement of how thick or syrupy the liquid is so water has low viscosity while corn syrup has high viscosity yeah, you can measure lava in viscosity as well. And the lava viscosity defines the size and shape of a volcano. Exactly. Okay. Now, the composite cone volcano. Or you could call it the strato volcano, I believe. So it's tall and symmetrical. And it's composed of layers of lava flows and volcanic ash. And the eruption style can have both explosive eruptions and effusive eruptions. And examples are the... Um, Mount Fuji in Japan and Mount St. Helens in the United States. So going deeper, um, classical tall, conical shape, they are composed of alternating layers of lava flows, volcanic ash, and other volcanic debris. Um, so again, steep-sided and sticky. The lava is sticky, so it's viscous, 
like I said earlier, like quartz syrup has high viscosity, so this composite volcano lava, and fo- formed from alternating layers of ash and lava, as I said earlier, tends to form on conversion destructive plate boundaries. Yes. So the types of eruption again, times of inactivity. Inactivity eruptions are more periodic. Eruptions from composite volcanoes can be explosive and violent due to higher viscosity of the magma. They may involve the ejection of ash, pumice, and pyroclastic flows. So this is Mount Fuji right here, and it's dormant, which means it's like kind of sleeping, inactive. Yes. Okay, now let's move on to the cinder cone volcano. So it's steep-sided conical volcanoes formed by explosive eruptions of ash, cinders, and dust. So eruption style is explosive that ejects fragments of lava and volcanic ash into the air. An example is Sunset Crater in Arizona. Okay, so going deeper into these again, they are typically composed of loose volcanic fragments, such as ash, cinders, and volcanic rocks. So you can see a picture right here. And another example is Mauna Kea in Hawaii, right here. Okay, link shape to characteristics of lava emitted several km into the atmosphere, which is wild, solidified in the atmosphere, then rains down, which is also wild, and layers of tephra, which are volcanic material. I put a definition here, yeah. Rock fragments and particles ejected by a volcanic eruption is tephra. Okay, type of eruption, eruptions from cinder cones, volcan- volcanoes, are generally explosive but not as violent as those from composite volcanoes. They can be really sudden and characterized by the ejection of ash and volcanic debris. Yes, cinder cones developed, developed from explosive eruptions of mafic, heavy, dark, ferromagnesium, and intermediate lavas and are often found along the flanks of shield volcanoes. And here's, you could just read this. This is a really good description. Sums it up really nicely. Okay, secondary hazards of volcanoes. So materials from volcanic eruptions. So you can see here, this is a volcano. Um, types of secondary hazards. Lahars, pyroclactic flows, ash fallouts, acid rain, ash cloud, landslides. All are secondary hazards after a volcano erupts. So yeah, you could read this a little bit. Okay. So types of eruption, there's lava lava eruption and pyroclastic, and pyroclastic eruptions. The types of hazard with lava is lahars and pyroclastic landslides and pyroclastic flows. So a lahars is a violent type of mud flow or debris flow co- composed of a slurry of pyroclastic material, rocky debris, and water. The materials flow down from a volcano, typically along a river valley. Here's a picture of Mount St. Helens after the eruption. This dark deposit right here, this dark stuff, is a lahar. And, yeah, lahars are mud flows created when water, like from rain or melt, melt water from glaciers or rivers, and volcanic ash mix. This deadly combination can have devastating results on the surrounding areas. Yes, when lahars settle, they can be meters thick and as hard as cement. Lahars can occur long after a volcanic eruption. As you can see here, this is an example of lahar, and this is like water and lahar meeting together. Here's a video of lahar in Japan. You can see that, that's really dangerous. Cameraman is suffering. Yeah, that is what typically it would look like if it's like a really destructive situation. Okay, next are pyroclastic flo- flows. Excuse me. Um, it's a dense collection of fragments and gases from a volcanic eruption that flows down the slope of a volcano. So it's like blah like that. Okay, so it's fast moving. 
It's really fast moving. It occurs as a part of certain volcanic eruptions. A pyroclastic flow is extremely hot, burning anything in its path, quite literally, and leaves a mark. And it's one of the most deadly volcanic haz- hazards and are produced as a result of certain explosive eruptions. They normally touch the ground and hurtle downhill or spread laterally under gravity, which is very, very scary. And it's really important to know that they're fluidized mixtures. And the last one is landslides from volcanic eruptions. All volcanic edifices are susceptible to landslides, particularly stratovolcanoes like composite and shield volcanoes. Edifices are basically like structures, if I sum it up in a really broad term. So at volcanoes, the term landslide is commonly used for slope movements with shear and displacement in a relatively narrow zone. So they can be in forms of debris, avalanches, debris flows, slumps, and rock falls. And a debris avalanche is a sudden, very rapid flow of rocks and soil in response to gravity. It is a common middle stage in the transformation of a cohesive debris flow from a landslide or rock slide. And debris avalanches may be restricted to grain flows or granular flows in which flow mechanisms or mechanics are governed by particle interactions involving friction and collision. So here's a better definition of debris avalanches right here. And to talk more about types of eruptions, it's really important to know the Plinian eruption is the most powerful type of eruption with a towering ash cloud reaching up to 50,000 feet, so 10 miles in height, and extremely dangerous pyroclastic flows. So it's like coming out. So examples are the Mount Vesuvius in Pompeii and Mount St. Helens in the United States. So Pelinian eruptions are extremely explosive eruptions producing ash columns that extend many tens of miles into the stratosphere and that spread out into an umbrella shape as you can see here. These large eruptions produce widespread deposits of fallout hash. So it just like falls down. That's really, really dangerous. Another one is the Strombolian eruption. Um, It's short, explosive. Short, explosive eruptions shoot thick and pasty lava, steam and gas into the air, producing little to no lava. The resulting steep-sided cone is called a cinder cone, which is... Yeah, the type of volcano I've mentioned. So named after the volcanic island of Stromboli near Italy, eruptions have been occurring almost continuously for centuries. That is absolutely scary. Due to its frequent eruptions, Stromboli is often referred to as the lighthouse of the Mediterranean. Oh, goodness. Okay, so that's about it. Thank you for watching.